All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about the intermediate value theorem. So I'm just going to talk about what the intermediate value theorem says, do a couple of examples that are almost going to seem uh, too good to be true, um, and that'll be it. So nothing real deep in this one. Okay, so the intermediate value theorem says the following. It says, suppose you have a continuous function on a closed interval. So we'll say this is the x-coordinate of A and the x-coordinate of B. Okay, so the function's continuous, and okay, so at a it equals some value, maybe we'll call it m, and maybe up here at b it equals some value, it doesn't have to be the different value, but we'll say that this is the y-coordinate of, we'll say n up here, so this is the point b comma n, this is the point a comma m, Okay, so if it's a continuous function, we have to be able to get from our bottom point up to our other point. Okay, and it could have easily, you know, gone up real high and back down. It could have done all sorts of things. But the main thing is, since it's continuous, it's got to get from one point up to the other. Now, the intermediate value theorem simply says the following. It says, take any middle, any point in between M and N, maybe I'll call it I, since it's an intermediate or in-between value. It says, um, if you take any point i that's in between m and n, it says there has to be a point, it says there has to be a point in the interval a to b that when you plug that into your function, you'll get the value of i out. Okay, so kind of a wordy, um, statement of the intermediate value theorem. It says, suppose f of x is continuous on a to b. Um, it says, let f of a equal m, f of b equal n, Okay, so obviously in this case, um, m is smaller than n. And then it says let i be smaller than n and greater than or equal to m. It says then there exists a point c in this interval a to b, so that when you plug c in, you get this number i out. Okay, so that's just kind of a wordy way to write this result up here. Okay, so let's just do a couple examples using the intermediate value theorem. And probably the most common types of problems you're gonna see with the intermediate value theorem, I think, are these. It says, show that there is a root of the given equation on the given interval. And remember a root, you're just taking an equation and trying to figure out where it equals zero. That's what it means to be a root. Okay, so they give me the interval 0 to 1. Well, if I call this my function f of x, notice if you plug 0 in, you'll get 0 cubed minus 3 times 0 plus 1, or the value of 1 out. Notice if you plug 1 in, you're going to get 1 cubed, which is 1, minus 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 1. Well, that gives you negative 3 out. And if you think about the graph of this function, the main thing, the main reason you can use the intermediate value theorem here is, well, x cubed minus 3x plus 1 is a polynomial. So it says if you plug 0 in, it says you're getting 1 out. Okay, so it wasn't actually defined there, but that's okay. It says if you plug 1 in, you get negative 3 out. Okay, this is a continuous function. We're trying to show that there's a place, there's a root, um, there's a place where the equation equals zero. Well, graphically, that's where your function f of x is gonna cross the x-axis. If your function's continuous and it goes from, well, above the x-axis to below the x-axis, it's going to have to cross at least one time. Okay, and there's nothing to say that the graph doesn't cross in general, multiple times. Okay, this is a um, 
a third degree polynomial. So what I'm about to show couldn't happen for this particular function, but in general, the intermediate value theorem just shows that there's at least one root. There may be multiple roots, in fact, if your graph um, you know, crisscrosses a bunch of times. Again, x cubed minus 3x plus 1 would not look like that. Okay, um, but since it goes basically from negative to positive and it's continuous, the intermediate value theorem says, well, there has to be a place where it equals 0. So the same thing on this next one. We're trying to show there's a solution to this equation on the interval 1 to 2. Well, what we can do is simply subtract the uh, radical, uh, the square root of x plus 1 over to the left side. And now it's the same idea. Finding a solution to this original equation is going to be equivalent to finding a root of this second equation. Um, notice as well that x squared is a polynomial, so it's continuous. Um, square root of x plus 1 is just a root function composed with a linear function um, that's going to be continuous on its domain. 1 and 2 falls inside of there. If you subtract two continuous functions, it's still continuous. Okay, so you really have to make sure that these functions are continuous. You have to give an argument as to why you can use the intermediate value theorem. But again, now if I just plug in my values, if I plug in 1 into the function, notice if I plug 1 in, I get 1 squared minus square root of 1 plus 1. Okay, that's what, 1 minus um, square root of 2? Square root of 2 is bigger than 1, so this is certainly going to equal a negative number. Okay, if you plug 2 into this function, notice if you plug 2 in, you'll get 2 squared, which is 4, minus the square root of 3. Well, square root of 3 is certainly smaller than 4, so this is going to equal some positive number. By the same argument that we gave in the last problem, it says, okay, at 1 it's negative, at 2 it's positive, the graph to go from negative to positive is going to have to cross the x-axis and therefore again there has to be another root. Okay, so again, you know, obviously this there's more exam there's more um, types of problems to use the intermediate value theorem on, but they're all basically the same idea, okay? But roots tend to be the most popular ones. So Hope this video helps you out. If you have any questions, just uh, shoot me an email. I'll try to get to it as soon as I can.